Okay, in this video we're going to go a little bit more in depth into HTML5 and talk about an official HTML5 document. Previously we discussed some HTML and we made a very simple little page with uh, about a cat. And if we look at this, this looks like HTML but it's not very pretty, right? But we did do a little bit of styling, we did some colorization, some changing of font, and we'll, we'll take a quick look at that code. Um, <clears throat> We pull this up and we go into intro and then cat.html. Okay, so we started talking about this idea of HTML tags. Um, a HTML element is the entire uh, item here highlighted. The tag name is inside the angle brackets, right? And you often have an opening tag and a closing tag. And the closing tag is just like the opening tag, except there's a slash before the tag name. Okay, so I want to take a minute here and go over to developer.mozilla.org and they have a, a nice graphic here um, of what we're looking for in an HTML element. The angle brackets, we have an opening tag, and what's in between the opening tag and the closing tag is commonly referred to as the content. And this can be plain text or this can also be any other HTML elements. Okay, but the entire thing is known as the HTML element. Okay, so this sort of diagram is important, and remember, this would be the tag name, and then for the closing tag, slash tag name. All right. Now, there are more complicated versions of this once we start adding attributes to an HTML element. Again, we're on developer.mozilla.org, which is an excellent resource to learn about HTML. Uh, here we see the angle brackets are much wider. There's more information in between the angle brackets. We still have the um, tag name here, but then we have a white space, okay? And now everything that comes after that white space is an attribute, and you can have many attributes. I could have another uh, single or multiple white space after this, and that would indicate another set of attributes, okay? So this entire thing is called the attribute. Class is the attribute name, and then what it's equal to, this is the attribute value. Uh, more often than not, you're going to use quotes for the attribute value. There's, all, there's very rare occasions for you to not use quotes. So just in general, for the sake of uh, beginning, always put quotes around your attribute values. Okay, so attribute name equals and then a quoted attribute value. And again, you can have many of these. And then that's all in the opening tag here, right? And then you have your content and your closing tag, okay? So this is fairly standard, but this diagram is a very good one. It's important to understand that. Okay, so this document we had previously has some HTML in it, but like I said, it's not an official HTML document. So what we're going to do today is uh, how, talk about how to create an official HTML document. Um, the browser is very forgiving. As you can see, it renders the HTML pretty well, but it's, it's, not, uh, it, it's making guesses about certain things, uh, and you might not want it to do that. Right, so you, you, if you were building this professionally, you definitely want to make an official HTML5 document. So let's do that. We're going to make an index page here. <clears throat> and we can close out of this. Um, I'm just going to do this on our desktop, and that's, that's fine. New file, index.html. All right, so we've got a blank document here. The first thing we want to add is the doc type element. And for HTML, it's very simple. Now this is a somewhat strange HTML element. Um, it's based on the evolution of the language of HTML. Uh, as we know, we're talking about HTML5, which means there are four previous versions. Um, and there's actually many more versions. There's XHTML uh, and, and that sort of thing. So this doc type uh, used to tell the browser what specific type of HTML you're using. It still does, actually. But they simplified everything in HTML, and HTML5, the doc type, is just HTML. These doc type strings were much more complicated uh, in previous versions of HTML. Okay, so this exclamation point, angle bracket exclamation point, is kind of a strange um, style in HTML5, and it's the only really um, only element that really looks like that. Uh, we have comment elements that look similar, but this is kind of a unique one and it's based on the evolution of HTML. Okay, so just exclamation point doc type space HTML. All right, now we get to the more um, usual 
or the more familiar HTML uh, elements. So we're making an HTML element as the, the main tag or the main element of our page. Inside the HTML uh, tag, we might want to have um, some attributes. So you might have language and EN, that means English. So that specifies the language that the default language your document is supposed to be written in. This helps search engines and this helps browsers. Uh, a lot of times you'll have translating software installed onto your browser so it knows what language it's dealing with. Um, if you have other languages in your document, you can, inside of those tags where the other language is written, you can add an additional language attribute and change the language. So that way the browser knows what language it's dealing with. You also have a tag. Uh, oops, DIR direction is what kind of language is it? Is it a right, right to left language or left to right? So English is left to right. All right, and then we have <clears throat> two main uh, elements inside of the HTML element. Okay, so this is the content of the HTML element. We have the head tag, and then we have the body. Okay, so the body is what's actually rendered onto the page, and then what goes inside the head tag is additional information not directly related to the rendering of that page content itself. Okay, so there's some uh, what we like to call metadata in here. Uh, there's even a tag called meta, which stands for metadata. So one of the things we add here is a meta tag, and we specify what type of character set we have to uh, we're using to write this document. And the car set is UTF-8. All right. Now this meta, uh, meta tag is a void element, so it has no children. So it's legal HTML to not close this, right? But uh, for beginners especially, it's nice to close these because then you know that you're not expecting a closing tag somewhere else. Okay. So it is valid HTML to close them. And it's valid HTML to not close them, but it, it's a little bit less confusing when you make sure all of your elements are either closed or not closed. All right, so I'll, you'll see me all the time. I'm always going to close my elements unless it's uh, a typo or a mistake or something. Okay, so we have a meta element here, um, and we also have the title tag. Now, this is the first thing that's actually going to affect our page. Now, it's not the page itself, but it's the tab of your page. Okay, so we're gonna, this is gonna be, let's we'll say it's a game website. Right? When we save this and in the body, just so we have a little something, we're gonna say games. Alright, so this is the very beginning of an HTML, uh, an official HTML5 document. We've specified the doc type, HTML. Um, the HTML element itself has an attribute called lang. That attribute value is en, that stands for English. And then it has an attribute uh, dir or dir, which is direction, and it's a left to right language. Okay, then we have the head tag. Inside of the head tag, we have meta tag, metadata about this document. What type of character set are we using for this document? It's UTF 8. That's um, these days the standard for just about everything. Uh, and then the title tag. And the title tag is, is uh, the contents of that is what shows up in the tab of your browser. Okay, and then the body, we just have some text called games. So we can open this up and drag it over here. And sure enough, here we have game at the top, right? That's our title tag. And then in the body, we have games. Now, there's a couple things that you might want to do on top of this. Uh, we might want to have a little icon here other than the default icon. All right, so what we can do is we can add a link tag, and we're going to link another document into our HTML document. Now, this isn't a link like a hyperlink like you might think. We're linking uh, a document, and we use the rel attribute, which stands for relationship. How does this document relate to our HTML document? And we're going to be adding an icon. Okay, and then <clears throat> the href is the hyperlink reference to this uh, this document that we're linking right so the document that we're linking is actually I have a little gamepad controller uh, image in here under images on my desktop as well see it's right there so I'm just gonna make the path 
images slash gamepad dot jpeg. Okay, and we'll save that. And when I reload, you see the little gamepad icon changed. Okay, so now I have uh, a little logo for my website, which is nice. All right. Now we can see I can add this actual image to the body of our page as well using the IMG tag, IMG um, SRC, and it's this same href, right? Uh, for the image tag, you call it the source instead of href, and we have images slash gamepad dot jpeg. Now, the image tag, again, is a void element. It doesn't have any children. But again, you'll see me self-close that tag. Self-closing means you don't have a closing tag, but you do have a slash at the end of the opening tag. So that's called self-closing the tag. And a lot of times, I'll use it for void elements. All right, so we can reload the page. And now we see we have this very large image. So the image that we used here is actually very, very large. Um, so a lot of times, uh, you, you won't. Generally speaking, you won't want a very large image here because that's just a waste of downloading time, right? If you're only displaying the image in this little space here, you want to scale that image down very, very small so that way it doesn't take very long to download, okay? But in this case, we're using it in two different places. So we went ahead and used the same image and we used a big one, all right? So uh, one thing to note here, let's, let's scale this down a little bit. Let's change the size here. We can use the uh, width attribute and we can change the width of this image say we want it to be 200 pixels so again uh, width is the attribute name and in quotation marks we have the attribute value all right so we save that and we can see that this image scales down quite a bit all right and here notice we have games which we typed before and it's on the same line we have the image right if we added more images they would add in line like this so we can duplicate this line right and Adam shift control D duplicates a line or you can just copy and paste all right so I've got three of these images now and if I re refresh the page all these images line up uh, in line okay so that's that's an important thing to know okay so something else with images before we uh, make make three of these Let's uh, take a minute to discuss uh, some interesting uh, additional uh, attributes we have here. So alt is, is one you'll commonly hear about, the alt text of an image. The alt text is important for a number of reasons. Uh, one reason is if, the main reason is if your image doesn't show up, if it doesn't load for some reason, instead of showing the image, it shows this alternate text, okay? So I can say this is alt text okay all right now one way I could make the image not show up properly is give it the wrong path to the image okay so now when I reload this page we see the image can't be found and so it shows the alternate text this is alt text there are other reasons to have alt text in an image as well though uh, the alt text helps describe your image and uh, a lot of times um, screen readers for disabled individuals uh, will read this alt text and help the individuals identify what the image is supposed to be about. Okay, so thinking about that, uh, those sorts of things uh, is very important for web development as well. Right, so we have this alt text, and then there's also a tag we can add, the title tag. Uh, I'm sorry, not the title tag. This is the title attribute, and we can add text that when you hover over the image, this is what shows up. This is a gamepad. Okay, and we'll save that. And we got to make sure that our image goes to the right place again. So we'll we'll change the URL and reload it. And now when I hover over this image, we see this is a gamepad. And this um, this pop-up is from the browser. Okay, so a lot of times you can make your own pop-ups and and style them however you want. But this is just the built-in one from the browser, and it's not particularly fancy, but it's really easy to use. You just type in title on a particular element, an image, and when you hover over it, it shows it. Okay. So again, as I said, we could duplicate this image a few times, <clears throat> and now they should all show up in a row like that. All right. And 
we can note that if I want a new line to show up, um, I can use the BR tag. That's basically that gives you a new line, and I self close them as you see. Again, this is a void element, doesn't have any children. Uh, the BR tag is um, a breaking line, a line break. Um, BR, add a couple line breaks here. And now we might have some more text. Um, I'm going to use span tags, which span tags you'll see all the time, and they're rather generic tags. They're usually used for enclosing some amount of text to put styles on it. And I'll show you why here in a second. So we have foo, and then I'm going to duplicate this line, and we're going to have bar and baz. Foo bar and baz are just common programming jargon that you might see when uh, reading or watching any kind of video. It's generic data, right? So we have these three words, foo, bar, and baz. And now let's compare that to another generic element. Um, we're going to add some dr tags here. All right, first let's just see how this is. We have our, our games and our three images, um, the, the line breaks, and then foobar baz. We'll reload that and see how it just lines up in a row. You wouldn't even know that each one of these has a separate HTML tag wrapped around it. Okay, and that's kind of the point of the, the span tag. That's why it's commonly used. It's one of the ways it's commonly used. It's around actual text. So that text appears in line like, uh, like it would be inside of a, a normal sentence or a paragraph, and you can't really notice it. But I can add styles now. I can say style equals color red, and then do the same thing here, style equals color uh, green and then style equals color blue. All right so the text is still in line but we see we've we've added basically an invisible kind of wrapper around it so that way we can stylize the text however we would like all right uh, so now that, that's the span element. You'll see these all the time. It's just a generic wrapper element for the most part. Okay, another type of generic wrapper element is the div. And we'll, we're going to show you what the difference between these two things are. So we have a div element. Um, so don't forget our angle braces. We have a div and a closing div. So divs are generally used to section off your web page to, to create structural uh, structural. Uh, differences in your in your page. Where do you want the columns? Where do you want the title? Where do you want the navigation bar? Where are the regions or the divisions of your page? That's why it's called a div. Uh, and so we're going to do the same thing we did up here with span and just have foo bar and baz. All right. And when we load this, see how it lays out differently. So a div forces everything above it and below it, uh, everything on either side of it to be on a new line. Whereas a, sp a span has a flow that's called inline. So everything flows inline, similar to how we have games here. And inline, right next to games, we have an image. And inline, right next to that, we have an image. Right. Same here with the spans. Spans have a display inline. And we can look at that if we inspect the element, right click on one of these. It opens up our developer tools in the web browser. The developer tools are very important. You can find them in the settings menu. Uh, most browsers have some sort of developer tools, but we can look at the element here and we can click on this. We'll close these. There we go. So it gives you a, a view of the HTML of your page. And as I move my cursor over here, you see it highlights down here. Right, it highlights which element we're, we're talking about. So we're talking about this one here. And on, in this section, it shows you uh, what CSS properties have been applied to this specific element. So on element.style, those, ele those are CSS properties directly attached to these HTML elements. If I uncheck it, it goes back to the default. Or I can modify it here <coughs> to, uh, I don't know, pink. Right. 
uncheck it, that sort of thing. Alright, so the developer tools are really handy, but it also will show you any other uh, attributes that your um, CSS uh, properties, I mean, that your elements have on them. So we can right click and inspect here. And this div, notice, has a special display property, display block. Okay, now if I change this to inline and made all of my divs display inline, they would display like this. Okay, so display block forces content before and after to be on a new line. Okay, whereas display inline forces content to be one thing after another on the same line. So let's let's experiment with that and let's go ahead and try that. So I can make all of my divs here. copy and paste this. Now copying and pasting that is a bit repetitive so we'll do something a little bit better next time. But we see now this these divs are behaving more like spans and really that's the main difference between a div and a span. A div by default is display block and a span by default is display inline. That's the primary differences and that's why spans are mostly used for surrounding text items and any kind of inline items. Okay. So here, here we have the style attribute, and we used it for our divs, um, but we had to duplicate it a, a bunch. And if we had, you know, a hundred divs, that would be a lot. So we're going to show you how to um, use CSS generically, so you can select all of the divs in your page, right, and then apply CSS rules to those those items or those elements, right. So to do this inside of the head tag we're going to have a style tag. Okay, so don't forget our angle brackets. Oops. There we go. And close the style tag. And in here we're going to say for all of our div elements, we're going to make them all display inline. Okay. So what this does is it selects every single div element and it's always going to change the display to inline. So I can have hundreds of different divs here. I can remove this style. I don't need it anymore because I specified the style up there. Refresh the page and see all of my divs are inline. I could also say uh, background color So every div now would have a background color red, just like that. Now notice the size of the div is trying its trying to be as small as possible, right? So the div is the container and it's only big enough, it's stretching its size based on what's inside of it. That's called auto sizing and that's, that's kind of used as a default for a lot of HTML elements. However, it's different when we get rid of this display inline. When we go back to display inline, uh, display block, which is the default for a div, we see <clears throat> that the horizontal size of the div goes the width of the page. Okay, so that's common with divs. It forces uh, the elements before it and after it to be on a new line, and it stretches itself all the way to the edge. So that's a very common thing with divs. All right. So now notice also. If I put a little BR tag in between each one of these, okay, we can get a little bit of space between, right, just like that. And since I applied this style to all of my divs, any divs that I, I create are going to be read like this. And I can copy and paste this. And so now I might have 50 different divs, or 20 or something like that, but they all have those styles. So that's, that's the important thing to note. The main difference between the, uh, the span and the div, the span is display inline, and the div is display block. Okay, so that's why spans are used normally around 
textual elements and then divs are used to section off or divide your page up into sections and we'll go more in depth about sizing in the next video okay so I'll give you a second to look over this code and that'll be it for this video alright